module one i dr rita pratap former head of the department drawing and painting university of rajasthan jaipur today in my first lecture i am going to give you an overview of chinese art china is the third largest country in the world and home to more than one fifth of the world's population with the siberian steppes to the north tropical jungles to the south vast deserts to the west and 2500 miles of coastline to the east china is a land of vast geographic and climatic diversity the numerous mountain chains that dot the chinese landscape divide the country into distinct northern and southern regions each with its own geographical features and cultural traditions the richest farmland lies in the fertile plains and valleys of the yellow and v rivers to the north and yangtze and hisi rivers to the south and it is near to those rivers that china's great cities first arose throughout china's long history ambitious rulers from both inside and outside the country's borders have attempted with varying degrees of success to consolidate and control this vast and culturally diverse land while each ruling house took its place on the stage of history snatching power from its predecessor before being inevitably overthrown in turn by its successor native artists gradually perfected the various styles of metalwork ceramics sculpture and painting that have come to be recognized as distinctively chinese continuity has been a consistent theme of chinese civilization despite a tumultuous history of bitter civil wars and foreign invasions chinese culture has survived for thousands of years by maintaining a persistent respect for the past and keen awareness of the past connections to both present and the future the chinese people reverence for ancestors their strong sense of history and the remarkable capacity for bending innovation and tradition have all contributed in keeping chinese culture intact in times of adversity written language has also played an important role in maintaining the continuity of chinese civilization despite regional differences in pronunciation the pictographic characters that make up the chinese written language have remained essentially unchanged since their first appearance more than 3000 years ago whether painted with a brush or cut into stone the same basic system of writing has been used continuously for thousands of years to record and preserve the history of traditions of the chinese people the art of calligraphy has traditionally been regarded as the highest of the chinese art forms mastery of the brush whether used to write a poem or paint a picture is recognized in traditional chinese culture as the hallmark of the educated person the materials and techniques used for practice of calligraphy and painting are essentially the same the finely pointed chinese brush is held in an upright position so that the tip of the brush generally made of goat's hair is centered over the writing surface the ink which is made from water pine soot and glue is modeled into cakes called ink sticks that are then rubbed 
with water on a flat sloping area of an ink stone. Prior to the invention of paper, which is traditionally dated to the year 105 CE, Chinese painter and calligrapher painted mainly on strips of bamboo or on silk which was cultivated in China over 4,000 years ago. Indeed, the ancient Romans called the China the Silk Lands and the great trading network that conveyed Chinese silks, ceramics and other goods across Asia to the Mediterranean was known simply as the Silk Route. Chinese paintings are traditionally mounted either as hanging scroll or hand scroll, both of which are usually kept rolled for storage. The vertical hanging scroll, which was used for figure painting and large scale landscapes was intended to be viewed simultaneously by a large group of people. The horizontal land scroll sometimes interspersed painting with narrative text was designed to be viewed one section at a time by individuals or small intimate groups. Collection of smaller paintings in circular, oval, rectangle or fan shapes were often pasted into albums that could be spread out and viewed all at once or viewed as individual pages in a book. Chinese paintings often include a poem or other inscription by the artist and art collectors sometimes added their own inscriptions called colophons to the paintings they collected. The red seals included at the end of the inscriptions are the signature seals of the artist and collectors. Despite their seeming contradictions, diaism and Confucianism together provided the philosophical underpinnings of traditional Chinese culture. While Confucianists focused on the individual's duty to conform to the rules of a rigidly hierarchical social order supported by a clearly defined code of moral behavior. Daoist embraced spontaneity and non-conformity in the effort to live in harmony with the indiscernible way known as the Tao. The mystical metaphysic of Taoism and the sober authoritarianism of Confucianism found common ground, however, in their shared concern with loving life in harmony and balance. Later when Buddhism was brought to China from abroad, the Chinese gradually filtered the foreign religion through their native sensibilities and ultimately put a new Chinese face on it. The subtle evolution of Chinese Buddhist art as it gradually distanced itself from its Indian origin provides a graphic illustration of the Chinese talent for incorporating innovations into the seemingly rigid confines of tradition. To understand Chinese culture, it is necessary to understand how traditional Chinese view to mankind's position in the universe differs from that of the Western world. In China, heaven, earth and man were perceived as links in greater cosmic chain with the emperor, the son of heaven, serving as mediator. In China, nature has traditionally been understood to operate through an ever-shifting balance of life which is characterized as dark and passive and yang characterized as light and active. Where Westerners tend to see a world of contradictory and irreconcilable forces 
in constant conflict. The Chinese see a subtle interplay of complementary elements gracefully shifting this way and that to maintain their natural, their natural balance. In the Chinese worldview, negative and positive are not opposite but complementary. Together, yin and yang give form to one of which all things in nature, including mankind, are equally apart. The story of Chinese art begins with Neolithic period, circa 5000 to circa 1700 BCE. The Shang dynasty from circa 1700 to 1050 BCE. The Chao dynasty from 1050 to 221 BCE. Many contenders have struggled for control of China during the late Chao period, also called the period of Waring States, that is from 475 to 221 BCE. Before the short-lived Jin dynasty emerged victorious from 221 to 206 BCE, the Han dynasty lasted for more than 400 years from 206 BCE to 220 CE with collapse of Han Empire. From 220 to 618 was a period of disunion and Sui dynasty. The earliest known great masters of Chinese painting and earliest known writings on painting theory date from the 6th dynasty period. Now I shall talk on the six principles of Chinese painting. The six principle or six canons of Chinese painting was established by He Shi Ho circa 500 to circa 535 CE. He was a writer, art historian and a critique of 5th century China. He is most famous for his six points to consider when criticizing or judging a painting. That is, Pen Yin Hui Hua Lin Fa, taken from the preface of his book, Record of the Classifications of Old Painters, that is, Pen Yin Gu Hua Pen Lu. The six canons of painting is the earliest of these, that is from 475 to 501 AD. A text of fundamental importance in any study of Chinese painting theory. In this book, he has discussed the six technical aspects of Fa. And on these six technical aspects, he has cited the 29 famous Chinese artists, which refers to old and ancient practices. The six elements that define painting are, firstly, the spirit resonates or rhythmic vitality. In Chinese, it is Shi Yun Sheng Tung which refers to the flow of energy that encompasses theme, work, and artist. Hishio said that without spirit resonance, there was no need to look further. Famous art historian Mario Busagili has also said about this principle that the painter must grasp the essence of life by means of a personal tuning in his own spirit. Animation through spirit consonance is interpreted as a kind of resonance or rhythm in a painting, an expression of artist's heavenly inspiration. The painting must have what Chinese call Chin Yun, the spirit or breath of life, that is, life spirit. 
The second element is bone method or anatomical structure. In Chinese, it is Ku Fa Yung Pi. That is, the way of using brush refers not only to texture and brush stroke, but to close link between handwriting and personality. In his day, the art of calligraphy was inseparable from painting. The third element is the correspondence to the object or conformity with nature. In Chinese, it is Ying, Wu, Hsing, Hsing. That is depicting a form which would include shape and line. The fidelity to the object in portraying forms implies a certain degree of naturalism. When portraying a horse, one is governed by the conformation of a horse. The fourth element is suitability to type or appropriate coloring. In Chinese, it is Sui Li Fu Tsai. That is the application of color, including layers, value, and tone. Conformity to kind in applying colors applies most particularly to the use of colors in a decorative sense. The fifth element is division and planning or artistic composition. In Chinese, it is Ching Ying Vi Chin. That is, placing an arrangement of elements corresponding to composition, space, and depth, thereby corresponding to the principle and thus in some degree to the natural law. The sixth element is transmission or copying or transcribing and copying. In Chinese, it is Chuan Moi Hisi Chu. That is the copying of models, not only from life, but also from the works of antiquity. Copying was the discipline by which the painter, through studying the brush of his predecessors, learned to control his own. This was a way of study of allowing one's brush to retrace the inspired hand and arm movements of the great masters. The two main techniques adopted in Chinese paintings are going to be discussed here. The first is Gong Bi, that is meticulous uses highly detailed brush strokes that limit detail very precisely. It is often highly colored and usually depicts figural or narrative subjects. It is often practiced by artists working for the royal court or in independent workshops. The second is ink and wash painting. In Chinese, it is shui mo or loosely termed as watercolor or brush painting and also known as literati painting as it was one of the four arts of the Chinese scholar official class. This style is also referred to as he shi yi or free hand style. After the fall of the short-lived Sui dynasty in 618, the Tang emperor promptly restored order under a centralized Chinese government and the period known as Tang Dynasty, which lasted from 618 to 907 AD. The end of Tang period was a time of great economic and social upheaval in China. With its collapse, China was once again split into unstable regional kingdoms. In the northeast, a semi-nomadic people called Liu had established its capital at present-day Beijing. The rest of the country was ruled by a series of short-lived kingdoms 
referred to as five dynasties period and the leo dynasty which lasted from 907 to 960 ad political disunity ended in 960 with the reunification of china under the first song emperor who was a great patron of art the northern song dynasty lasted from 960 to 1127 ad when most of the northern song territory including the capital at kaifeng was conquered by the qin in 1127 the song court fled south and established a new capital at the hangzhou the southern song dynasty lasted from 1127 to 1279 in 1234 the mongols led by chinggis khan had overthrown the qin dynasty and the song capital at hangzhou finally fell to chinggis khan's grandson kublai khan in 1276 Kublai Khan became the first emperor of the Yunnan dynasty which lasted from 1279 to 1368. The Ming dynasty was founded in 1368 by the general Chao Yuan Chang and lasted till 1644. By the late 16th century political corruption was rampant under the incompetent ruler of the last ming emperor in 1644 manchurian tribesmen invaded beijing and brought china under control of the qing that is literally pure this dynasty also lasted till 1912 in the 20th century economic disaster led to the collapse of the qing dynasty in 1911 the imperial government was replaced by the new republic of china the new government was determined to modernize china by adopting western ideas and ways the shanghai finance institute founded in 1912 introduced art students to such western techniques as drawing from life painting arranged still lifes painting in oil on canvas and using watercolor and gouache on non absorbent paper while some artists resisted westernization by reasserting traditional chinese painting styles and many others traveled to japan and Europe and especially to Paris to study western art after the end of first world war schools of modern art had opened in beijing shanghai nanjing and hangzhou and an interesting amalgam of chinese and western styles began to evolve but during the cultural revolution that is 1966 to 1976 universities art schools and museums were shut down and counter revolutionary artists and scholars were put in prison or exiled to rural communes to be reeducated according to the communist party ideology in 1976 with the death of mao zedong the cultural revolution came to an end and with the death of deng he shaping in 1997 a new generation takes over the reins of government as china enters the 21st century china is the third largest country in the world despite a tumultuous history of bitter civil wars and foreign invasions Chinese culture has survived for thousands of years. Written language has also played an important part in maintaining the continuity of Chinese civilization. 
The art of calligraphy has traditionally been regarded as the highest of all Chinese art forms. Mastery of brush, whether used for writing a poem or paint a picture was important. Strips of bamboo and silk were the base for painting. Hanging scrolls or hand scrolls were the means of mounting the paintings, collection of smaller paintings in circular, oval, rectangular or fan shapes were often pasted into albums. The paintings often included poems and red seals at the end of the inscriptions are signatures of the artists and collectors. Daoism and Confucianism were the philosophical underpinnings of Chinese culture. The story of Chinese art begins with the Neolithic period and in the Sixth Dynasty period, the establishment of six canons by He Xiao adds a record in Chinese history. Besides this, two main techniques adopted in Chinese paintings were gong bi, that is detailed brush stroke, and ink wash painting. The last dynasty, the Qing dynasty, lasted till 1912. In the 20th century, the new government tried to modernize China by adopting Western ideas. Modern art schools had opened and an amalgam of Chinese and Western styles began to evolve. But during Cultural Revolution, that is from 1966 to 1976, all art activities were shut down and according to Communist Party ideology were re-educated. After 1997, the new generation has taken over the reins of government as China enters the 21st century.